be praised, Lord. You are worthy of all the honor and all the glory, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Lord, this morning in reverence to you, King. King Jesus, King Jesus. Lord, there is no one like you in all the earth, Jesus. There is no one like you, Lord. Lord, I worship you, Lord. I glorify you, Jesus. Lord, I honor you this morning. I honor you this morning, Lord, for you are holy and you are mighty and you are worthy to be praised this morning, Lord. With all that I am, Lord, with all that I have, Lord, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, Lord. For you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. Oh, Lord, that you would be praised, Lord, in this temple. Lord, that you would receive all the worship, Lord, before your throne. Lord, like a perfume, Lord, that you would be honored this morning, Jesus. Lord, that you would be honored, Lord, above all things. Lord, above all circumstances, that you would be honored, Jesus. Lord, that you would be honored, Lord, over every feeling, over every doubt, over every fear, Jesus. Lord, that you would be honored, Lord, that you would be glorified. Oh, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. To God be the glory, all the days of my life, Jesus. All the glory, all the glory, Jesus, to you. All the glory, all the glory, all the glory, Jesus, to you.
Well, this morning, I'm just going to f- share a few things that through the week I've been going back and forth. Lord, what, what do you want me to share? And uh, this morning I was looking at this verse, which is according to the, uh, what's it called? Amplified, which adds to it, but it makes it clearer. Which says, from Ephesians 2.10, it says, We are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Well, that, I just felt to read that, to show, show us that he prearranged it all. He took care of it all. He's called us. But I, uh, well, you know what? I forgot I wanted to share something first. So just hold that scripture. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to share a little personal testimony before I get started with this. And most of you know that Sarah and I went for a family reunion in New York a few weeks back and uh, saw most of my family, close cousins. I mean, there's a lot more different places, but the ones that were closest, we grew up together in one house behind the other and all their, them, their kids and their grandkids. <clears throat> and the siblings that each one uh, married. But, um, you know, for years, I was the, uh, well, first of all, I grew up Catholic, a Catholic church, and uh, my family are Catholics. And when I got saved, when God turned the light on for me, and he led me out of the Catholic church. He doesn't lead everybody out, but he led me out. And so each time that I would go, and I would try to tell them about Jesus, and that just didn't go over very well. They didn't want to hear nothing about it, even though they believe Jesus, they believe in the crucifixion, they believe that kind of thing. You know, as, as far as going any further than the religious thing, they just didn't do. And... Um, <clears throat> anyway, after years and years of asking the Lord, I would say, Lord, are you going to do anything with this, my family, just me? Do you, have, do you not have more for some of the members in my family? And then I would pray as this, these days have gone by the past few years, Lord, may they be a part of what you're doing in this generation. Don't skip over them. Don't, don't, please don't let them miss what you're doing. And so with that background, I just wanted to share that when I went back and talking to different ones, I'll give you an example of my cousin Frank. Me and him were like brothers. We grew up, he was six months younger than me. We grew up together. And his wife, which I always saw hope with her because she, she was in the Catholic Church, but I knew she had a personal relationship with the Lord. You can tell by the way she spoke and the hunger she had for the Word. But my cousin Frank, you don't want to hear nothing about it. You know, that's good for you, uh, you know, nothing. But these past few years, and I can't tell you exactly how many, God has been drawing him. And... He's been going through, he had uh, cancer in his neck, in his spine, and they operated and did a 
uh, operation. This is a few, few years ago, um, 19 hours. And uh, they did this and they got it all out. They didn't give him chemo or radiation afterwards. They said it was good. He was, he was filmed, he was on TV commercials, his face was on the billboard talking about the doctor, all these things because this was apparently some breakthrough in technology and this operation. But anyway, point is that <laughs> um, recently uh, cancer has returned. And my wife did some research and found out this type, which I don't know the name of it, she knows it, but uh, is one that often comes back. And why the doctors didn't, I have no idea. But my point in all this is, when I went there and I was talking to him and Marie, which is his wife, they started going to a... Uh, uh, charismatic, non-denominational church. They were baptized like three, four weeks ago. This is kind of tremendous for uh, Catholics. Uh, if you were a Catholic or your family, you know that you were baptized when you were a baby and that was it. But there was nothing more. But after talking and my wife talking with Marie and my cousin, you just know uh, that God is at work there, not only in him and his wife. His, he has two daughters and the daughters uh, seemingly not interested, but there's something going on there too. But I was encouraged to hear that God led them out, that they were able, they feel they know what it's like now to have the family of a church family where they, they, they gather around them and pray for them. And, and uh, I guess all I wanted to say about it is I see God there doing something in them which will also do something in their children and grandchildren because whatever God does in the family, it's not going to go without. But then, my nephew, which is my older sister's oldest son, he has a son named Daniel, who's 16, who was born mostly deaf, but he, would hear, he had a hearing aid which helped him to hear. Well, recently, he found out that he's going blind also, which... Um, you know, it was devastating to the family. But what I saw was that my nephew's wife, her brother is a Christian, born again Christian, and had invited my nephew, my, my grand nephew, to church. And he started going to church there. He reads his Bible now, one hour a day. Each day, he's going to be baptized like this week or next week. And his father started going to church with him, which is my nephew. And he likes it. Now, that's a big deal in my family, you know, because... Um, before nothing. But the attitude of this young man, 16, he wants to be a preacher. Now, has God called him to? I don't know. But he wants to be. And he said to me that he wants to make that decision, you know, that it's his decision to be baptized. And so seeing that and seeing the effect it's having on his dad, which the mother came up to me, which I really don't know Lisa very well, but she took my hand and she said, Daniel's going to be baptized. She was so excited. And these people are not religious. I mean, yes, they're Catholic, but they're not religious Catholics. And I could just see that what God is doing. 
after all these years, that God is moving upon my family, which will affect my sister, her husband, who was very anti in the past. There is, I see his, God's hand all over the, this family, where before I didn't. So, my point in bringing that up is that, <laughs> that don't give up on your prayers. That God is faithful and he has a timing for all things. When we think, ah, oh, there's no use. They ain't going to come. They, you know, they don't want God. No, God knows what to do. He knows how to get to each one. And God works in families. And if they're savable, God's going to save them. God knows the heart. And he works on each one. And I see, I even had my, my niece's uh, boyfriend, which they, um, they have two children, and he came up to me, and he, uh, which he really doesn't talk to anybody unless he's had a few drinks. And uh, he kind of, he came up to me and he said, I see that you have a, a beer in your hand, so you're not against drinking and I said well I only drink one or two I don't drink whatever but as he's talking to me he's asking me these questions and I'm seeing this man is hungry he's wanting he's reaching I sense that he's reaching he wants out of his prison so this is the sense I got at this trip is that God is working God is faithful. Though you might not see it with your naked eye at first, but continue to pray. Continue to believe. Don't give up those prayers that you have for your loved ones, friends, that our God, is, his ways are not our ways, and he is faithful to do that which he has promised. And so I just wanted to share that testimony um, it was a good time to see most of my family there was just one cousin uh, that wasn't there but uh, anyway with that I will switch to what I was going to share which was I was reading Psalm Psalm what was it oh gosh I'm drawing a blank now and I didn't write it down. Give me a second, I'll just get it for you. Psalm 77 and 78, which 78 is very long, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing. But I was reading this, and when I was reading it during the week, uh, I read it, and I just sensed the Lord trying to talk to me about it. And it begins, he says, I cried out to God for help, and I cried out to God to hear me. And when I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned and I mused, and the spirit grew faint. When he goes on, he's crying out to God. But then God tells him to remember what God has done in the past. The things, the uh, miracles. But anyway, I'll read just a few verses here, which it says, I thought that this, this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. And I will meditate on your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is so great as our God. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your might and your arm, you redeemed your people and, and descendants of Jacob and Joseph. And it goes on. I read the whole thing, but I want to read because, and now 78, I read both of them. And I'm only going to share the fact of where he talks about, 
he leading the Israelites out of Egypt and how God did all these miracles in Egypt. So you all know the story, you know, all the things he did, God did, and then they were in the wilderness and then they started questioning God and accusing God of not feeding them and giving them water to drink. But As I'm reading it, I, uh, I felt that what was supposed to share just a little something that I wanted to tell the young people and us old people, older people. But you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of things happening. Good things, wonderful things are on the way. Just like the Israelites saw God do miracles, wonderful things. And how long that will be, I don't know. Could be a long time. But what I felt to share in it, with it, is that, you know, these Israelites, as you know, did not enter the promised land because of their unbelief. They saw God working. They saw what happened. How can you not believe, you would think? But when things got kind of rough and God wasn't doing these miracles all the time, uh, you know, they, where'd their faith go? Kind of disappeared. But I just wanted to say that with God doing things in your life, and they're always, it's always progressive, but you're going to see a lot of things happen. But then, there come a period of time where you don't see that anymore, and things become difficult, and you're in the valley, however long that might be. My heart's cry for us and for me is the secret place, the holy place. And my point of sharing that portion is when things get rough, because it's in those times when things get rough that we grow the most. This is where the roots get deeper, if we make him our secret place if we go to him. And I know you all have heard this and I've talked about it before, but I don't think we can ever stop encouraging one another to making it a time, a daily thing, daily. And then I'm not saying that because I had, especially when I was your age, in fact, I wasn't even a Christian at your age or some of your ages, but that's something I always struggled with. But now that's not the case. I mean, I come, and because of circumstances in my life, it, it did become a, uh, I'll use the word habit, but daily coming before the Lord. And not to say every time I came, I heard God and everything was wonderful, but I made myself available to him. And this, it's there that you're going to find in those times in the world and wherever God has you and whatever season in your life that you will be, that's where you will find your peace, your comfort, your growth. This is where, you, out of your relationship with him, is where ministry will come. It's not in all the getting involved and doing this and that. God may have called you to be a preacher. He might have called you to be a teacher. He might have called you to be a, uh, a sanitation worker. It's really not about that. But it's in your relationship. 
And when you have a relationship, that's when God is able to share his heart with you. That's where he changes you. That's where he cleanses you. That's where he speaks to you and say, hey, we need to clean this up. This is where you need to come to me and I will, I will bring a change. And it's in his presence that we are changed. So whether we're in church, but most of the work is done in your personal prayer life where nobody sees. Nobody sees what you're doing. It's there. That is where it all counts. If you don't develop that, first of all, you're not going to make it in, this, in, the, in the coming days as far as remaining with the Lord. Because that's where he will speak truth, where everyone else, everything out there is a lie. Everything we're hearing, is, it affects us all when we hear these things and what are say. And you repeat a lie long enough, people start to believe it. So whether you say, no, that won't happen to me. But this is, this is his word. And he can only, how often do I read and it's just words. But then suddenly, then suddenly God will speak maybe just a few words out of that chapter. And when it becomes real, not just here, not in your head. I know a lot of people, or so, not a lot, some people, they're very smart. They, can, they know the word upside down and in and out, and they can argue the point. And you got me, because I don't know that much. But when, you, when the word, when he takes that word, and makes it alive in your heart. That's yours forever. And nobody can take that from you. And so, I just want to encourage, and I know it's a battle, especially with the, with the, the li lifestyle we all have nowadays, that er everybody's busy. Everybody's got a million things to do, involvement here, this, that, all sorts of stuff. But that should be your number one priority. That should be my number one priority. And that can be a battle in the start. But as you continue, and maybe you're all there already, I don't know. But I felt this is what I should share. Because this is, this is, this is it. With everything you're going to get. It's not going to be what somebody taught you. It's not going to be what the preacher told you. Unless God can use a preacher and speak his words and that can come alive to you. And it, it could be the Lord through him. But it's not the whole thing. He can use people. He chooses to use people. But that relationship. Where he's your God. And he changes you from glory to glory. And you're never going to be perfect here, for sure. None of us will be until we reach the other side. But God wants vessels, vessels that he can use. And all it takes is willingness. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to have many talents. If God wants you to have a talent, he's gonna, you can ask for them. God gives them for you. You're to use them for the body of Christ. And uh, you know, I, let me just share a little bit of my personal struggle with it. As a young adult, I mean, I was Christian a few years, quite a few years, and I was here. I was a young man when I came here. But my sin would nullify or the enemy would use to nullify, to cause me to stop pursuing the Lord. Because as I said, it's no use. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I can't walk the walk. I can't do what it takes.
The enemy is always going to be in your air, ear to disqualify you. But then, during those days where I sought the Lord, this is where the blood became real to me. Yes, I heard it. I knew about the blood. Yes, he shed his blood. But the fact is, it wasn't about me and my sin. And that, yes, I'm this. Yes, I've done that. Yes, I, I would be disqualified if it wasn't for the blood. And when God made that real to me, the enemy could not take that away from me. So when he would come and say, oh, see what you did. You're not worthy. You're not able. But it was only through the pursuit of him. And that was many times just waking up and reading the word and doing a Bible study and trying to, trying to do it. But those, when you make an appointment with the Lord, and for me it was always early morning because I'm best in the morning. In nighttime, I'm about to die. So during the early morning, I would get up. And then the Lord, sometimes he was just there. And he would speak to me and those words would pop off the page. And I'm not trying to say I'm a great student of the word. No, by no means. That's still, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I went to Bible school, but I took all the inspirational classes. When it came to how to search the scriptures, I didn't take those. I took the things, the poetical books and the uh, person that led these uh, classes were anointed and God would just be there when they, anyway. But my point is that uh, it's in those times alone with him with nobody else around. That's where you develop that, where you come to know him more and more and more. And of course, we can never stop knowing him. There's so much available to us and the, the more I go on the more I realize that God wants me to know him more that he's got so much more for me if I'm still here alive God has a purpose and that he wants to reveal himself more and then there's my fight with my flesh and the, uh, the struggle that I have with it you know I would see these preachers and they had it they had this and they could do that but not me I wasn't I wasn't uh, built that way. But I say all this because these past few weeks and the, the young people that are part here for the past couple of years, that life is a struggle, but he's in it with you whether you see him or not, whether you feel him or not, whether he call, allows you to go through hard times, you will go through it. When those winds will blow, those ones that are not favorable, that's when God's doing the most work. That's where he's rooting you and grounding you that nothing can say, well, deny Christ, come to that place. Because I was listening to somebody that we uh, talking, and this person was from India, and he was sharing some things that the people of India, the struggles that they have, the persecution that they have, which I know nothing about living in this country. Yes, we're having little taste of it here and there, but nothing what they do to Christians in India and other countries of the world and I would say well would I be able to stand up to that to that well, I see these horrible things happening to my family my children grandchildren would I deny Christ I really don't know I don't know if I would do that we don't know what's ahead it might not be anything like that I don't know the future I I uh, do know that we're living in unique times but it's in that continual 
seeking his face, reaching, and every time you give up, you get back up and you keep going. And I've said this all before, but I'm just going to say it again. It's in his presence. In his presence. That's the place for each and every one of us. So the Lord is preparing you. He is preparing me for what our next step is. So like I said, I don't know what that is for us. I don't know what it is for you, the country you go back to. It's not to, to be feared because when you're covered by his wings, none of that matters. When you're walking with him, he will, he will lead you and guide you and direct your path that if things are happening, he will direct you to walk the other way, go down this street or that street. And many people have given testimony of things that happened years ago in Argentina of how they missed a bomb blowing up and all these things. But my point is, all I really wanted to say is keep on making that your priority to know him. Whatever it is that you have to do to seek his face, to take the time daily. And if you find you can't do it daily, well, start, make it every other day. Whatever it is, but always be struggling keep to, to get to where it's every single day. If you can do that, but I know my flesh in those days would struggle against it because I was working, had kids, and all this stuff. But somehow God, ans somehow, God answered my prayer because I wanted that. He put it in my heart to want that because he knew what I needed. He wanted to make himself known. So in your youth, you have a lot of strength. In my age, you're getting weaker and weaker. But what I find, I'm finding a little bit at a time that as I become weaker, he shows himself strong. Because I can't do anything. You know, just getting up here and trying to share something is a struggle for me. Not something I wanted to do. I didn't ask for this but I believe God wanted me to do it. He worked on me in Bible school to get over my fears in front of people. And so even in this, whether I look at it and then say, you really didn't say what you wanted to say. You really messed that up or it could have been this, or it could have been that, because the enemy is really in my ear every time I do something and I feel like I messed it up, or I didn't do it right. But even in my failures, he is faithful. Even when I blow it, he is faithful. Even when I, which way I don't know to go, he will get me there if I just look to him. If I ask him to lead me and to give me wisdom and to show me because he's not a liar. And that's what it is. So often we don't believe God. We believe him for this because, oh, he saw us through that. But that next step, well, I don't, I don't know. I struggle with that one. I don't know. Can God do that? Well, yeah, in my head, yes, I know God can do that. But will he do that? Because in my heart, I don't know that. When we know it in our heart, we're confident. But God wants to make that real in our heart. Every word out of his mouth is truth. It's not mm, maybe or other oh, special oh, different circumstances. It's truth. And he wants us to know he wants us to know the truth. And when you know the truth, that's what sets you free 
free to come closer. Like for me, that blood, knowing that it is and does what it says it will do. That I have access to my Father, like I've said many times. I have access to the throne because of the blood. So it doesn't matter what I'm into, what, I've, what I struggle with. I mean, God's not going to let me just go do my own thing. He's going to convict me. He's going to deal with me until he sets, allow, I allow him to set me free in different areas. Because the, the more you go on, the more you find out that this isn't the way or this mindset that I have or this stronghold in my brain that I think is right is really not right. This is not the way God is. When he brings down those things, it's a, it's a process in our lives. So know, know that he is with you through it all. When it seems like he's not there, he's there. When everything goes wrong, he's there. And he's not going to drop you. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to, he's not going to abandon you. And I know you've heard this many times that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then we think, but what do I have to go through? I'm afraid of what I have to go through, <laughs> but go through it anyway. Do it anyway. Because when we face our fears, God is there. He's with us in it. And he says, love casts out all fear. And he's revealing his love, and he wants to reveal more to me and to you. So though, that we may serve him on this side, that you may be and I may be a vessel, whether it's one person that you affect, or a million people. It doesn't matter. God's not into numbers. You know, I don't know if you have aspirations of what you think, and maybe God has spoken to you that you'll do this and that. But what matters is you've done what he's asked you to do. Obey. Obey whatever he tells you to do. So if you're a garbage collector and that's what he wants you to do, of course, you're not just going to collect garbage. You're going to affect those around you. You're going to, God's going to use you amongst those people. But there's great reward because you've done what he's asked you to do. And that's what matters. Be faithful to what he's called you to do. And if you don't know what he's called you to do, don't worry about it. You're going you're to find yourself there as you continue to walk with him and draw near to him and he'll guide you and direct your path. It's in his hand. It's not in your hand. You can't make it happen. I can't make it happen. So basically, that's all I, I, I wanted to say is to continue to encourage each one of us I need to encourage myself often about seeking the Lord. You know, because sometimes you cut it short because you're, you got this to do, you got to go to work, you got to do this. But spend that time. And as you spend that time, you start to love that time. And then look forward to that time. But that's where your strength is going to come. That's where your direction will come. That's where your protection will come. All of it comes from there. So whether he's going to use you in a foreign land or whether he's going to use you wherever, that's God's business, and he'll let you know. So I just want to pray before we go. I want to thank the Lord. for what he's doing and what he's going to do in these days. He has you in the palm of his hand. He has me. May his will be done in your lives. Each one of you, 
May the desire and hunger for him, for truth, grow stronger and stronger in your life. That he will lead you and guide you all through this journey. He promises to. And if he makes a promise, he never breaks it. It's us that break our promises. It's us that fail. <laughs> but he doesn't condemn us. He just says, come on. Okay, you fail. Get back up. Let's keep going. His plans for your life and my life are much better than we can imagine or think. So know that you can't go wrong with surrendering your life to him. You may struggle in your flesh for wanting what you want, your plans, whether it be a career or marriage or children or all those things. If that's a part of God's plan for you, you will have. Because he does give you the desires of your heart. But he doesn't want to be a father that gives you something that's going to hurt you. That's going to do damage to you. So he will say no. But he may receive the greatest glory. It's what we should want. Not what man thinks is wonderful. Not what people in Christianity think is so great and wonderful. Whether you have the biggest church or the most followers or you have great finance, it doesn't matter. What matters is what he thinks and what he has for you and for me. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to work in our lives and you unveil yourself to us as we pursue you. Thank you that your desire is to rid us of everything that would keep us from coming closer to you. Lord, thank you that you don't leave us when we say, no, Lord, I don't want you to deal with that. You'll come back and say, okay, now. Now's the time. Are you going to let me or are you not going to let me? Lord, have your way. May the attitude of each and every one that is here would be, your will be done, Lord. Not my will, but your will. I want to please you, Lord. I don't want to please myself. I don't want to please others. I don't want to be a man pleaser. I want to be one that pleases you. Whether I have to make a fool out of myself or not, it's not about me. If you ask me to do something, I want to be willing to say, okay, I'll do it. You're going to look like a jerk, but that doesn't matter. Because it's not about you, Richard. Lord, I want to have a heart that loves you with all my heart and all my soul. I want to be one that walks with you all the rest of my days. I want you to say, come in, come in. Welcome, faithful servant. May we all be faithful to our call. Thank you, Lord, that you work in us to will and to do your good pleasure. And bless each one as they go. And as a tomorrow comes, and they go about their business, whether traveling or whether in working or in school, busy at home. Speak to their hearts. Woo their hearts. And when they listen to you whispering in their ears, come aside, spend some time with me. I want to share with you. I want to tell you something. I want to show you myself. May we answer it more and more. May we shut out those other voices that scream in our ears. 
may we hear your voice and respond to it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your gracious, merciful, and you continue to work. Even when it don't seem like you are, you are. So go with the Lord. Seek his face. Lord bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you.